Hello everyone, so in the last lesson we were introduced to the idea of electrolysis, which is where we use a battery to separate compounds into individual elements. In that example we used sodium chloride. In this example we're going to use lead chloride. Okay, now I'm using the word molten. Now the reason for that is, remember we said that, well when we were looking at sodium chloride we had a metal and a non-metal. Now lead and chloride, that's also a metal and a non-metal. So it's an ionic substance and so when you look at the bonding it would look something like this. There would be a ionic crystal lattice structure. And so what we need to do is we need to try heat this up so that we can break these bonds over here. But even if we break it up, then we're, gonna, we're not going to have pure lead and pure chlorine. We're going to have the ions, which is going to be lead plus 2 and Cl minus. But notice that there is absolutely no water present. We're taking the solidified lead chloride, we're heating it up and so it turns into a liquidy type substance, almost like lava, and so we call that molten, but there's no water. We will be looking at examples in the next couple of lessons where there will be water present. And so what we can understand is that by heating it up, we turn it into a molten state, which is then in the iron form, like this. And so I'm just going to say it once more. When we say molten, it means that there is no water. Now what happens is due to the fact that we have a battery, we've got a negative and a positive. So because of this negative over here, what this actually means, remember we said this in the previous lesson, when you've got a negative part of the battery, um, the electrons flow out of the negative terminal of the battery. And so because we have a whole lot of electrons collecting on this electrode, it becomes negatively charged. So what happens is that it attracts this PB2 plus towards that electrode. Oh, and what we should have done is we should have circled our element on the periodic, I'm um, not on the periodic table, but this table here. So we have PB2 plus, so that's over there, and we have Cl minus over there. Now remember we said in the previous lesson that it is Normally, you would not get a natural reaction taking place if the one on the right is lower down than the one on the left. Because now, because this one on the right is so low down, it is a weak reducing agent. We can see over here along the side that as you go higher, your, increase, your reducing ability increases. So if this one is lower down, it's going to have a weak reducing ability. And this PB2 plus is going to have a weak oxidizing ability. And so under normal situations where we didn't have a battery, no reaction would be able to take place. But because of the battery, a reaction will take place. And so what happens is that this PB2 plus is going to move over to the right hand side. And so we're going to get that at that will be reaction at A, so PB2 plus, plus two electrons gives us PB. Then we've got the two Cl minus, which would be naturally attracted to this terminal over here, because this terminal doesn't have many electrons, and so it's going to be more positive, okay? And so that Cl minus is going to be attracted there, and we're going to get this reaction taking place, and so that's going to be two Cl minus gives you Cl2, plus two electrons. Now we need to identify anode and cathode. So remember this over here is a reduction reaction. Why? Because you can see that the PB2 plus is accepting electrons or it's gaining electrons. So that's the reduction reaction. So that's where that will be for the cathode. So for cathode I'm going to say PB2 plus plus two electrons gives you PB. If you're confused there you need to watch the previous lessons in the galvanic cells, then your oxidation reaction takes place at the anode, and this over here is an oxidation reaction. So we'll say 2Cl- gives you Cl2 plus 2 electrons. And so reduction, the reduction reaction will be the Pb2 plus one, oxidation will be this one over here. And so that's it guys, but what I want to just show you is that we started this whole process off with Pb2 plus and Cl- and if you look at the products, well, at, the, at, at, at electrode B, 
we form Cl2, and so there we're getting pure oxygen, I mean pure chlorine formed over there, and then at the other reaction we formed pure lead. And so this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to be able to take this substance and separate it into the two pure elements. And so here's another example. Here we're going to do the electrolysis of molten zinc bromide. And so we would typically want to be able to get zinc at the end and bromine. So what happens is that we first heat this up and it breaks up into its ions which would be Zn2 plus and would have a Br minus. Now where am I getting these numbers from? Well I know from my periodic table that Br has a valency of minus one and zinc is a transition metal so it technically can have more than one valency. However, because it was bonded with zinc bromide and there was a 2 over here, it means that zinc would have to have been plus 2. And so now what I go and do is I go find these on my table. And so zinc 2 plus would be over here and Br minus would be down here. Now normally you wouldn't get a reaction taking place if this substance on the right is lower down than this substance on the left. It's got to do with the fact that we would have a weak oxidizing agent reacting with a weak reducing agent and so it wouldn't normally happen. However, we do have a battery and so we can make things happen. And so what's going to happen is that this zinc 2 plus is simply going to go to the right and so I'll put that as reaction A. Oh, it says reaction at A. And so we need to find what reaction is going to take place at A. Well, because this is a negative terminal here, these electro electrons flow out of the negative terminal and they cause this entire electrode to become very negative. What that will do is it will attract the zinc 2 plus, which is positive, onto that electrode. And so a reaction will take place and the reaction would be the zinc 2 plus turning into zinc. Then at, the re uh, at electrode B, well, because this one here is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, it has a positive charge. And so this electrode B, we just said, is positively charged. And so what happens is that this Br, which is negative, would naturally be attracted, and then the reaction would take place. And so you would get, the reaction says 2Br minus, becoming Br2 plus 2 electrons. Anode is always where oxidation happens, and so that would be the 2Br reaction. But now you should know what an oxidation and a reduction reaction looks like. Cathode is always where reduction happens, and so that's going to be the zinc reaction. Reduction, the reduction reaction is always um, at the cathode, which is, so we've just said that already. I'm repeating a few things here just to make you guys and help you guys understand it. And then oxidation always takes place at the anode. And so that's going to be this one over here. And so there we have it, guys. In this lesson, we looked at two examples of electrolysis of a molten substance.